Hey everybody, it's me again, Chicken Noodle, and I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about gathering in Guild Wars 2. While this might be a basic discussion for veterans, I'm sure there are new players who are unaware of all the aspects of gathering in the game. The different types of nodes, node tiers and their respective zone levels, the various gathering tools that you can find in game, and glyphs. At the end of the video, I'm also going to be sharing some tips and resources to help you maximize your gathering experience. For the uninitiated, gathering is the process of using tools to pull materials out of logging, mining, and harvesting resource nodes around the world. Nodes will appear in-game as interactable objects that look like large rocks, small trees, or plants, and they'll appear on your minimap as rocks, logs, or leaves. Interacting with these nodes will give materials, and the materials you gather can be used for crafting weapons, armor, food, accessories, they can sometimes be traded to vendors, used to manufacture guild hall upgrades and decorations, or be sold to other players via the trading post. Unlike other games, all players in Guild Wars 2 can gather materials. You don't have to learn any specific jobs or skills to do this. You simply equip logging axes, mining picks, and harvesting sickles, and use them to gather resources. New players will receive their first set of tools at level 9, and some more tools as you complete your personal story and continue to level up. Most gathering tools have charges, meaning every use will expend one charge, and when the charges reach zero, you'll need to buy more. These tools can be purchased from merchants around Tyria, so keep your eyes out for those if you need them. When we're talking about gathering, it's important to know the gathering system has six tiers to just about everything, although there are many endgame resource nodes not in any tier, as they're normally map-specific currencies. There are six tiers to gathering tools, most materials, and the resource nodes, and each tier is roughly associated to a range of levels. To best illustrate the range of levels, let's go ahead and look at those in the context of the basic gathering tools you'll find. Basic gathering tools are made of specific materials and are generally good for harvesting resources in certain level zones. Tier 1 copper tools are normally good for resources found in level 1 through 25 zones. Tier 2 iron tools are used for levels 20 through 50 zones. Tier 3 steel tools are for levels 30 through 60 zones. Tier 4 dark steel tools cover the 45 to 65 zones. Tier 5 mithril tools are for the level 60 through 79 zone range and Tier 6 or Acalicum tools are for the level 75 to 80 zones. Now this is a generalization. Your copper tool won't work on everything you find in a level 15 through 25 zone, because a level 15 through 25 zone has Tier 1 and Tier 2 resources in it. Lower tier tools cannot be used to harvest higher tier resources, and attempting to do so will only result in the player receiving ruined ore chunks, logs, and plant fibers. Higher tier tools will work on lower tier nodes though. My suggestion is to just run around with the best gathering tools you can afford so you don't have to worry about ruining your materials. If you're ever curious about which nodes the tool can gather from, check the tool tooltip. They do a fairly decent job covering the list of nodes. Each resource type has several nodes per tier, and each node may yield specific materials. Mining nodes come in two types. Ore nodes, which give 3 strikes, and rich veins, which will give 10 strikes. You can mine copper at tier 1, iron and silver at tier 2, gold at tier 3, platinum at tier 4, mithril at tier 5, and ore calicum at tier 6. Each ore strike has a chance to yield a gemstone, which is a crafting material but can also be used as an upgrade component. From tier 1 to tier 6, the gemstones you can find are pebbles, nuggets, lumps, shards, crystals, and orbs of varying gem types. Logging nodes come in a variety of types per tier. Tier 1 nodes named Aspen, Eku, and Kirch will give greenwood logs. Tier 2 nodes named Gummo, Mimosa, and Snow Cherry will return soft wood logs. Tier 3 nodes, Fir and Tukawa, yield seasoned wood logs. Tier 4 nodes, named Banyan, Inglewood, and Pine, yield hardwood logs. Tier 5 nodes, named Balba, Cypress, Red Oak, Palm, and Mabaya, can give elder wood logs. And the Tier 6 Ancient and Orion nodes can give you ancient wood logs. Each strike may also yield hidden bags of loot that I guess somebody decided to store in a tree at some point, as well as ingredients for cooking or some Tier 1 gemstones. Now while logging and mining are pretty straightforward with their material progression each tier, harvesting nodes get really muddy. Each tier of harvesting has several node types that'll yield some type of ingredient, but some ingredients don't belong to any specific tier. Most node names and materials make sense. 
you get cabbage from tier 3 cabbage nodes, asparagus spears from tier 5 asparagus nodes. Then you'll find the tier 1 onion nodes, that yield onions. But then onions reappear in the tier 4 scallion nodes, and then the tier 5 desert vegetable nodes. Vanilla bean is another weird one. Vanilla bean is found in tier 1 herb seedlings, tier 2 herb sprouts, tier 4 mature herbs, and tier 5 verdant herbs. But you can't get vanilla bean from tier 3 young herbs for some reason. There's well over 50 different ingredients that can be pulled out of the ground, and there seems to be no rhyme or reason to how the ingredients are distributed. The untiered nodes that I had mentioned earlier are normally associated with specific living world maps, as each new map always has some materials that can be gathered from them. Things like the Bloodstone Crystal nodes in Season 3 Episode 1's map, Bloodstone Fen. The Winterberry Bushes in Season 3 Episode 3's Bitterfrost Frontier. The Mistonium nodes in Season 4 Episode 4's Jahai Bluffs and the Hatched Chili Pepper Bushes in the Ice Brood Saga Prologue's Grothmar Valley. Presumably, we'll see more untiered nodes in future Living World releases. Another special node is the Synthesizer node, which can be found in Guild Halls if they've earned that upgrade, or in World vs. World. There are Lumber, Ore, Herb, Berry, Vegetable, Cloth, and Leather Synthesizers, and gathering from these nodes will return some random materials of that type. The items you get will be at a tier equal to or lower than the tier of the gathering tool used to pull the materials out. Basic tier 4 tools will not yield tier 5 and tier 6 materials on these nodes. The major cities of Tyria also have gathering merchants who sell, for a bit of karma, special tier 6 crafting tools that do more than just gather. The material gathering tools will increase your chances of gathering additional materials per strike and the additional materials are based on the prefix of the tool. The leather workers tool may give leather, tailors may give cloth, and you get the idea. Go mine some ore and get some extra leather. Or use the herbalist sickles to get even more cooking ingredients. These vendors also sell the enhanced gathering tools. Instead of the possibility of giving extra materials, they have the chance to do things like instantly gather from a node, have additional hits on the node, gather from all nearby nodes, increase movement speed after gathering, or increase the speed of gathering. Then there's also tools that will let you collect Season 4's Volatile Magic every time you gather. If you like the idea of getting more while gathering, but you don't want to spend thousands of karma to purchase the tools, then you should consider buying some glyphs. Glyphs are upgrades that can be slotted into any tier gathering tools to provide additional effects while gathering, similar to what you find on those enhanced and material gathering tools we just talked about. Chances to get additional materials, additional strikes, increase to movement speed, gathering from nearby nodes, and all the rest. Glyphs have additional effects though, like the Glyph of the Crucible, which converts gathered materials to be one tier lower, or the Glyph of Alchemy, which converts materials to be one tier higher. Glyphs can be reused, so if you put a glyph on your tool, when that stack runs out, the glyph will go into your inventory and it can be used again. You can also unequip a glyph and swap it between your tools if you want. Unused glyphs can be found in Black Lion chests or purchased and sold on the trading post. If you use a glyph, then it becomes account bound and it cannot be sold. Unlimited gathering tools, as the name implies, do not have charges and therefore do not have to be replenished. These tier 6 quality tools can be purchased from the gem store using gems, or they can be purchased from a vendor using Black Lion statuettes. Almost all of these tools have special animations, and many of them will come with glyphs. One note about those glyphs though. When you purchase one of these tools from the gem store, the glyph will automatically be account bound and it cannot be traded with other players, but it can be unslotted and swapped between the characters and tools on your account. Okay, before I wrap up, here's some tips that I have for you guys. Tip 1. Before you go farming, stack up on all the buffs and effects that you can to help maximize your gathering time. Here are some effects that you can get. The first, you can speak to your guild hall bartender and get the gathering buff. The second is you can use a guild gathering and swiftness banner to increase your chance of finding rare materials and to gain swiftness. The third is you can use an item or heroic booster to increase your chance of getting an extra gathering strike on a node. The fourth is that some achievement chests may sometimes give you a one hour gathering booster. Use those if you have them. 
And the fifth is to not forget about your material gathering tools and glyphs, which will increase your chances of getting extra materials or strikes on nodes. Now another option is you may want to take a glyph of volatility or some volatile magic tools, since the volatile magic can be traded for material shipments. Material shipments can give you a fair amount of a resource type for 250 volatile magic and 1 gold. If you're gathering and farming for profit, some material shipments are more profitable than others. I'll put a link down below where you can estimate your return on investment for each type of those material shipments. Once you have all of your effects stacked, focus only on gathering and don't do anything else, so you're not wasting that limited time window before the effects wear off. If you have to take a break, you can log out of your character to stop the effect timers from counting down. The second tip. Ask around in racial cities like Radasum or Divinity's Reach and see if somebody has a completed home instance that you can use. Many players try to unlock as many nodes in their home instances as possible, and this is a great way for you to get lots of materials every day. Oftentimes, all you have to do is ask. Most people don't mind sharing their home instance with you. Home instance nodes can only be gathered once per day per account. And I guess it should go without saying, but don't forget to visit your guild hall every day and hit all those synthesizer nodes. Something I didn't mention earlier, but I should have. Guilds can upgrade their synthesizers to increase material tier and gathered quantity. If you're in two different guilds with different level synthesizers, then you can gather from each of those synthesizers per day. So really, synthesizers of different upgrade levels can be gathered once per day per account. Tip number three. If you're ever in the open world and you need more basic crafting tools because you ran out, you can buy some in your guild hall. Press G, then click the go to guild hall button. Buy some from the merchant, and then instead of waypointing somewhere in the world, if you click the leave guild hall button, you'll be returned to the same spot you were previously gathering at. If the node you were gathering from isn't there anymore, then you were likely returned to a different instance of that map. Tip number four. If your bags are filling up and you need to keep gathering, use this button in the corner of your inventory window. All the gathered materials that you have in your inventory will be sent to your material storage, which is a separate storage area so materials aren't cluttering up your bank and bag space. Material storage can be accessed from any bank or crafting table by clicking this tab on the left. Your material storage by default will hold 250 items of a given type, but it can be expanded up to 2,000. Check the gem store for material storage expanders. Tip number five. There are permanent rich nodes and harvesting gardens throughout the world. GW2Efficiency.com, which is a website run by another ArenaNet partner, has a great collection of all these resources. You can use the filters on the page to find exactly what materials you need, copy the waypoints to the clipboard for chat linking, view the map on how to get to that area from the waypoint, and then the expected profit for farming this spot. The permanent rich nodes can only be gathered once per day per account. I'll put a link down below so you can find that. And tip number six. GW2Taco is an overlay program that will draw farming routes on your screen as you play. This can be useful for gathering endgame materials in living world maps, farming permanent nodes, or hitting farms. Tech it Another ArenaNet partner has put together a large pack of custom markers that will give you access to many of those routes. I'll put a link down below to a video that covers more information about this overlay, like where you can get it, how to install it, and all that stuff. And the last tip. Turn on Show Usable Object Names. Gathering nodes will appear on screen with yellow names. This will make finding materials hidden in tall grass or underwater easier for you to find without constantly having to check your map. I'll also be sure to put more tips in a pinned comment down below. That way if something comes up or if new items are added, I can amend that comment instead of making a new video. And since we're talking about comments, leave me a comment and let me know what are your favorite tips for gathering and farming. I tried to cover a lot here in this video and I'm sure I missed something, so please sound off and share with others so we can all learn from your suggestions. And that about wraps this video up. Share this video with any new players that you think might benefit from it, subscribe to the channel if you like this delivery, and give it a like because the YouTube algorithm loves eating those tasty clicks. Also, if you didn't know, I'm an ArenaNet partner, and I have referral links down below that can be used to try the game or purchase the expansions. And doing either of those things will cost you nothing extra, but it's going to help my channel out in a big way. 
And finally, you can find me on Twitter or Facebook so you can participate in giveaways whenever I have those. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, happy farming.